says, opened his own eyes to the damaging effects of captivity. They are being subjected to sunlight without shade protection that causes cataracts and damage to the eyes. They're swimming in chemically treated water. There's been a lot of lies circulating about how we take care of our animals here at SeaWorld. The truth is, SeaWorld is recognized as a world leader in animal care. But that's not what the groups behind the film Blackfish or PETA wants to make you to believe. In letters to schools, PETA accuses SeaWorld of keeping its killer whales in overchlorinated tanks. I want to introduce you to Michael Tucker, who is in charge of maintaining water quality here at SeaWorld. To test for chlorine, we use what's called a colorimetric test. The presence of a pink color denotes the presence of chlorine. As you can see right away, there's a lot of chlorine in our tap water. So the water that you actually use to brush your teeth, drink, and shower in has more chlorine in it than any facility here at SeaWorld. We take great measure to ensure that the water our killer whales are swimming in is healthy. For instance, here at SeaWorld San Diego, we maintain what's called a natural seawater semi-open system. When it's time to bring in new water, we return the pool water back to Mission Bay cleaner than it was when we brought it in. We also keep our pools at a perfect 58 degrees Fahrenheit year round. Now that may seem cool to us, but that's a perfect temperature for a killer whale. The truth is, at SeaWorld, we've dedicated our lives to taking care of these amazing animals. We know you love these whales, and we love them too. His former colleagues and supervisors, however, tell a very different story. In April of 2012, uh, there was a night I received a phone call at probably 10 and 10.30 at night um, where John was telling me that he and another trainer the day before in the morning um, had basically violated a major safety protocol. I only know the story because uh, it was told to me by John. There was a mistake made with the gate. One of the locks on a gate was not properly put in place. So John was um, at that point moved to the Sea Lion Stadium and um, that did not sit well with John at all. The story that John told me was that um, the management made a decision after this incident with the gate uh, to move him to the Sea Lion Stadium. And he said in his words, that day I left work and I never came back. In my opinion, John didn't come back because he wasn't permitted to work with killer whales anymore. And that's not really in the book, um, but that's a big, big part of the story. It was a choice of his to leave SeaWorld. Perhaps not for the reasons that he's put in his book. He was a killer whale trainer. This is what he loved. This is what he lived for. This is what he was good at. Um, and in his mind, SeaWorld took that away from him. In his mind, we wronged him. In his new book, Hargrove writes, SeaWorld says its animals receive all of their food regardless of how they perform. That, he says, is false. John Hargrove's statement that SeaWorld deprives their whales of food is frankly the most ridiculous statement, uh, I think, in the entire book. We never, ever withhold food. I can tell you, this is something that I hang my career on. John knows this is not the case, and in fact, a couple of years ago, he tweeted that SeaWorld doesn't deprive the whales of their food. So it's not just me that disagrees with what's in John's book, it's John himself that disagrees with what's in John's book. Contradictions like this are a pattern for Hargrove. In his book, he says shows at SeaWorld offered the whales a, quote, temporary escape from their horrifically sterile lives in captivity. Yet in a 2011 interview, he said the opposite. Trainers, he said, quote, vary their days with their animals, ensuring that they would be stimulated throughout the day. It's kind of strange now to listen to John 
be critical of and say the things he says today, which within a couple of years ago, he was saying something completely different. He, you know, he loved the animals he worked with, he cared for them, he helped nurture them, he had relationships with them, and now he's saying that didn't happen at all. Today, Hargrove says he left SeaWorld because he was disgusted by what he called the company's corporate greed. But in 2010, he said the opposite, praising the company, writing it's staggering the amount of money that they have spent and are spending for in-depth reviews and facility design changes. I am, he wrote, very proud to be a SeaWorld trainer. Today, Hargrove says he was brainwashed for years by SeaWorld. He says the working environment there had a, quote, cult-like mentality, even claiming SeaWorld tapped his phone and had him followed. He describes his decision to leave the company as one of breaking free. With all his contradictory statements, for many people, knowing which John Hargrove to believe can be a challenge. To see him say things that are so contradictory to his passion, what he was so uh, driven to do, it's hard for me to see that. It's hard for me to see my good friend talk about things that I don't, e I don't even know who that person is. John Hargrove was a very dear friend of mine for many years, and there's this footage in Blackfish of John with blood all over his face, right? And it, if, if you didn't know anything about SeaWorld or what goes on, and you just watch this movie, you think, oh my god, a killer whale did that to him. No, he hit his head on the side of the pool, just jumping in, in a shallow area. So it had nothing to do with the animals at all. 